Good morning. Good morning. We will call this work session to order. Thank you for being here this morning with us. Uh, public comment, we have five citizens who have signed up this morning. And uh, the board, uh, we are very delighted that you have signed up. The Board of Commissioners respect our citizens' rights to address their government. All matters will be taken under advisement. Please limit your comments to three minutes. When you hear the buzzer, that is an indication that your time has expired. When I call your name, please state your address and subject matter. Mr. Larry Pierce, uh, please come forward. forth. Give me your address and your subject matter, and we will set the clock. Larry Pierce, 4120 Van Sant Road, Douglasville, Georgia. Good morning. Good morning. You know, there's one thing about coming up here. When you're not married, every two months I got to get cleaned up. I get cleaned up just for y'all, a shave and a haircut. <laughs> but I don't shave it all off. <coughs> So anyway, now that the dust has kind of settled, a most interesting thing, if any of you read the paper on Saturday, might have been Sunday, Sunday, yeah. It took three pages to talk about the transit system. And if you were smart, you'd read it three or four times because, you know, it's hard to understand when people work on things for a long time exactly what they're getting at. But the first thing I want to cover is that I'm in District 4. I'm not in District 4. I'm in District what? 2. Two. Yeah, I remember now. Thank you. Kelly Robinson is my representative. I looked up the word constituent. I've often heard that word, but I never knew what it meant. Constituent means, in the Black's Law Dictionary, that somebody represents you. Now, you know, as long as I've been coming up here, I don't think Mr. Kelly's talked to me ever. And he's never come over to visit me. And he never even so much as shook hands. But maybe that's a personal thing. Don't know. But Ann Jones said, let's take it slow. Now, everybody up here has had an opinion about what's going on, except Madam Chair. And I would like to say that your articles are very nice in the magazines, and you say you're a good listener. Well, I remember in high school, I was vice president of student council, and we had a ruckus come up. And the president, Eddie Sampei, who was Japanese, Everybody on the council was Japanese in Hawaii. That's the way it is. I wasn't Japanese. I'm Hapa Haole. Hapa means half. And uh, so he stepped out of office. By that I mean he turned the gavel over to the vice president, and he had some opinions. So all the time we've been coming up here, we've heard some dialogue, but not too much from you. And I would like to ask the county attorney if it's not proper for you to step out of context, hand them the gavel, and have a firm opinion about what we're concerned about. Because you are a leader. They represent districts. You represent the whole county. And I think it's real important to understand where you're coming from. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Pierce. Uh, next, we have Ms. Don Ray Leonard. Please come forward. Give us your address and your subject matter. Good morning. Don Ray Leonard, Beaumar Road, Subdivision, District 2. Just last month, Carroll County launched its low-cost transit system. Carroll Connection will provide one-way or round-trip transportation for county residents to any location within the county. The cost is $3 one-way or $6 round-trip, no matter the distance. Commissioner Chair Marty Smith said he anticipates the service to be fully embraced by the community, especially those who are in dire need of such program. It's door-to-door -door system instead of mass transit. It's Monday through Friday, no set routes. Travel is determined by the needs of the day. 
Participants must make an appointment for pickup at least 24 hours in advance. The vehicles seat up to 10 people and are equipped with wheelchair lifts. Now they must cover 504 square miles. They have a population of approximately 110,000. Douglas County has 201 square miles with a population of approximately 140,000. Carroll County pays $35,000 a year, vice the millions we are about to spend of our taxpayer dollars. We believe Carroll County got this one right. The proposed system is way too lopsided with the whole county paying for it, but less than half of the county being serviced by it. This new system must service all the people. It must be fair and equitable. Madam Chair, if you insist on having a bus system, make it something that everyone, the whole county can be part of and be proud of. You can be the hero here. If you're the chairwoman for all the people, you must ensure this system <coughs> serves all the people. Commissioners, please reconsider this CMAC grant and vote no. There is another option and solution on the table. We can do much better. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mrs. Leonard. Next we have Ms. Cindy Fedak. Mrs. Fedak. Oh. You're on the list. You're not coming? Oh, you don't want to speak? Okay, no problem. Next, we have uh, Ms. Kelly Hun Honey. Ms. Honey, please come forward. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Kelly Honey. Uh, my address is 7897 Rio Grande Trail. Uh, here to talk about the buses. In uh, 2016, I voted for the persons that I thought would have this county's best interests at heart and all citizens in mind when making decisions. I spoke with and had meetings with some of you regarding the direction of our county. Promises and assurances were made during these meetings. I can say that some of the promises were kept. Night meetings were implemented. Taxes were not raised in 2017. Retreats are being held in the county. Work sessions are recorded and put on the web for citizens to view. Thank you for keeping these promises. The last 10 months, the county's best interest has not been kept in mind, and the board has some rogue members. What is happening now is not, not what I voted for. I voted for people that I thought would compromise and listen. I am disappointed that only two members of this board showed up Tuesday night to answer questions regarding the buses. I want to personally thank those members that took time out of their schedules and showed up. It makes me think that the ones that did not show up did not want to hear any opposition to the system nor wanted to help the situation. From my point of view, this bus issue is not an us against them Democrat or Republican, black against white scenario. It is about right versus wrong. It is about lawful process and not adding more tax burden to our fellow citizens. It is about keeping in mind every citizen in this county when you make di big decisions like the buses. But some commissioners would have you believe that it is a race and political party issue. Last year, some programs in the budget had to be taken out because we did not have enough to go around. This year, the audit company found a very large Greta shortfall. And now the audit company was found, has found another problem yet again. Someone is not doing their job in making sure the county receives paperwork and tax money from 11 corporations that receive tax abatements. It is, it, is nobody outraged over this blatant, irresponsible oversight? You want us, the citizens, to entrust the board with an $8 million taxpayer bus system. I and my fellow citizens who voted to elect most of the officials in 2016 feel betrayed. The board is not acting in a nonpartisan and fiscally responsible way as I did when I voted in 2016. I ask you again, 
deny the CMAC grant and start with a simpler system that works for the whole county instead of just two districts. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mrs. Uh, Ms. Honey. Uh, last but not least, we have Mr. John Tomaski. Mr. Tomaski, please come forward. Give us your address and your subject matter. Good morning to all, John Tomaski, 2929 Post Road, Winston. I'm here to speak about uh, Friday's presentation by Dr. Corbin. Uh, first, uh, at Finance Committee that I saw Dr. Corbin and Dr. Arrington, uh, when they spoke, I was impressed by the content and the manner in which they spoke. It was clear to me that these were not survey monkey analysts. <laughs> And indeed, uh, they both have real PhDs from real universities. And when he presented his remarks, you heard quite a bit of what you'd heard from me, three minutes at a time, or by emails to some of you, or in meetings with some of you individually. He had presented a lot of factual material and facts of a matter imply other questions and answers to those questions. Matters of policy, matters of ostensible agenda, matters of actual agenda. And I compliment the chairman of the Finance Committee for having chosen those gentlemen as consultants and subsequently gotten their approval by the body as a whole because they will do a very thorough professional job and Dr. Corbin is straight as an arrow, untainted by the, what has come to be known as the Atlanta culture by some. So at the end of the day, there will be a very good result. There can be no other result because the genie has left the bottle. Good day to you all and thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Tomaski. I'd like to thank all our citizens who uh, presented this morning and this matter again would be take your matters would be taken under advisement. We have a presentation this morning as <coughs> Nancy, um, Commissioner Robinson. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to address the, the citizens comments, but I'm going to wait until we get to that topic down later. But I want to make sure I acknowledge this because we'll I'm do yielding. that. Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you for yielding. Um, next, we have a presentation, um, a presentation. Uh, Ms. Mr. Chris Pomfrey, who is our executive director of the Development Authority. I asked uh, Mr. Pomfrey to come in this morning because we are actually getting ready to uh, unveil our strategic plan on August 22nd. Please join us. It's going to be a uh, uh, an effort of excitement for this uh, county. Um, our new com uh, community branding and strategic plan presentation from an avalanche consultant will be here. This, is, uh, this unveiling is uh, long overdue. The last time we had a strategic plan in Douglas County was in the 1990s, and I will not steal his thunder. So I would just like to present to uh, everyone today, uh, Mr. Chris Pomfrey, please uh, present, and thank you for coming in today. Thank you. Good, good morning, everyone. Good I'm morning. glad to be here this morning. Um, I guess I made it right on time. So. You did, right on <laughs> had a, time. Had a doctor's appointment this morning. Um, but as uh, Madam Chair mentioned, um, we did conclude our um, community and economic development strategic plan, our, our first strategy uh, since the last one, which was completed back in 1999. Um, and as, as mentioned, we will have a public unveiling uh, of that plan on August the 22nd at 5 o'clock um, at the Douglasville Conference Center. We will have the consultant. Um, Amy Holloway from Austin, Texas will be here uh, to, to present the strategy and we'll have some other guests um, there as well. We'll do kind of a, a five o'clock event and then we'll do a 6.30 event. So to be able to capture those folks who kind of live here and work here or who are just retired here and want to get there at five and for those who are driving um, from other parts of the region from work to be able to come as well. There'll be uh, activities as well for the kids, so it doesn't have to be one where you say, 
you know, are, um, I, I can't come because I have kids. So there'll be activities for the kids as well, uh, really incorporating um, the strategy. Um, but the, we embarked on this strategy starting back in 2016, um, realizing that we hadn't had a, a plan and we needed to get a plan in place. But this was really after years of having a lot of divisiveness, um, not a lot of collaboration happening between um, both city and county as it related to economic development. And we wanted to also bring the business community um, to, to the table as well. So instead of us going out and just um, hiring a consultant to do a strategy, we wanted to have a broad base of support involved uh, in, in pulling it together. So we had 13 different organizations uh, helped fund this strategy to the tune of about $135,000. And I'll, I'll list off those organizations uh, very quickly. Um, Wellstar Douglas Hospital, uh, Fox Hall, Service First Bank, Georgia Power, Greystone Power, Hartley Rowan Fowler, the Water and Sewer Authority, Hughes Ray Company, mm -hmm. the City of Douglasville, Douglas County, the Douglas County Chamber, and the Development Authority. These 13 organizations all work together um, in, in guiding the strategy, um, ensuring that we were, were putting a strategy together that made sense for our community, and also kind of remain intact as it relates to helping uh, working on the implementation uh, of that strategy, kind of serving as our executive leadership team. Um, a, a little bit about the consultant that we did hire, as I mentioned, they're from Austin, Texas. Um, we wanted to bring in someone from, with an outside perspective, an unbiased perspective um, of Douglas County, and really learn about the attributes of the community. What are our strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats? Um, Avalanche and their, their work uh, is across the country. Uh, they work with some very well-known communities, Columbus, Ohio, Jacksonville, Florida, Houston, Texas, um, the Miami region, the Charlotte region, and a host of others. Um, for our strategy, we had about 150 residents who participated in face-to-face -face discussions. Um, we had about 1,100 respondents uh, participate in online surveys. We also solicited uh, external parties to provide their input into the strategy. And we had uh, 62 members uh, uh, representing Douglas County on our steering committee. And so this really was a perfect blend of public and private um, uh, sector coming together to sh really shape the future of, of our community. So the strategy, uh, and I'm not gonna get all the details of it today because we also wanna kind of leave some of that for the 22nd, um, but the, the strategy lays out a vision for the future of the community. Um, it focuses our efforts on four pillars. Um, we'll be focused on external and internal marketing and branding, um, building a high skill talent pipeline, making strategic investments in infrastructure, real estate, beautification, and others, and building a diverse business ecosystem that identifies target sectors, supports existing businesses, and cultivates entrepreneurship. Um, you've seen uh, some efforts of this already in, in play. Um, we had the, the joint comprehensive plan that is underway right now, um, the downtown master plan, which was completed last year, tools that we're working on for redevelopment, um, one thing that we're really excited about is the marketing and branding. We did um, hire a firm called DCI um, last December. Uh, they just completed uh, that marketing and branding piece um, a few weeks ago, and so we'll be unveiling that. So we've been purchasing um, swag for that, so you'll have caps and T-shirts and all that kind of stuff, really kind of showcasing that brand and, and laying out the implementation uh, of the strategy. So all of that will be... Um, at the August 22nd event. I did have the opportunity to tease um, some of the, um, the branding results uh, with the interns, the, the county interns, um, when they came by our office and they really liked, they really liked it. We wanted it to be something that, that reached the future generations, not just spoke to kind of where we are today, but actually where we're headed. And they, and they really were uh, excited and grasped um, to it. This marketing and branding will lead to a number of website overhauls, um, consensus and messaging about the community, um, and a concerted effort to educate and inspire the residents and businesses of our community to really highlight what's great about Douglas County. And, and so this, this is something that we, like I said, we've, we're really excited about putting together. Um, you see the, the broad base that has come together to, to put the strategy together. Like I mentioned, 62 steering committee members, and we're already talking to uh, additional businesses today um, about coming on board to help support this. 
Um, we're also looking at how do we better align our resources to fully implement the strategy. Um, as I mentioned, we're covering four pillars, and, um, and so that's going to require a lot of effort and resources to make sure that we're able to fully implement it. But some of these things are underway um, today. And so uh, that's what I really wanted to, to talk to you about, um, just to make sure that you were aware of that. I know you've probably seen some of the advertisements um, in um, Chapel Hill News and Views. And um, we'll, we've been posting on social media, trying to building a, a good buzz about it. But we're really excited about where we're headed. And I'm here to answer any questions you may have. Mm -hmm. OK. Any questions from the board, board of commissioners, or comments? Commissioner Guider. Uh, is this uh, available to the commissioners before the 22nd? Yeah, so I, I know of our, I, actually, I, I know I sent it to everyone maybe last year, but I know it's been a while. So I'll, I'm going to resend that out. You'll have a link that'll have all of the reports that were done that kind of led to the, the, str the strategy itself. Um, the competitive assessment, which is about 174 pages of data. Um, so it's, it's actually a pretty fun read. Um, there's another report is focused on target sectors, um, the, the, the target businesses that we're going to go after. And then uh, another report, I think, is on our brand. And then you'll have the final report, which is the strategy itself. And it explains more about the pillars and what have you. And then also you'll have the, the marketing blueprint. So you'll have all of that in kind of one link because um, it's a lot of uh, large files. A lot of emphasis is often uh, put on the large corporations and the large uh, warehousing and things like that. But uh, was the uh, small business community involved in this? Very much so. Um, the, the, the broad base of the, um, the steering committee, we, we actually broke them down into segments. So we had um, entrepreneurs, small business owners. Um, we had public sector, private sector, large and small. Uh, nonprofits all were kind of made up within that steering committee. And you'll see the list of them uh, in the reports as well. And one of, and part of our pillars for the build business success is focused on the three areas of new business recruitment, that's in target sectors. Um, existing business support and entrepreneurial um, uh, support and, and activity. Um, what we did see in Douglas, uh, which was which was very interesting in that in that report in the data report, was whereas um, other parts of the region were growing um, in the, the number of micro businesses or entrepreneurs in, in general, Douglas was seeing a decline, and so we couldn't just attribute that to um, the recession there were because everyone was going through a recession and so what are the things that we needed to put in place locally to help boost up um, a small businesses and entrepreneurs and the wsa was uh, heavily invi involved uh, we have a lot of restrictions out in my district because mm -hmm. of the three uh, yeah. acre uh, stipulation yes, you know for homes and everything but um and the dog river basin mm -hmm. uh, uh, some of the sites right there on the interstate cannot be developed because of restrictions of uh, impervious so, uh, surfaces and things. Mm -hmm. So um, was there any discussion about that? <laughs> yeah, I know those, those are one of the things that when, it talk, when we're talking about, you know, how are we investing is also looking at policy. And part of the comp plan is really kind of looking at various corridors, especially that one um, on the, the northwest right. side. <clears throat> yeah, and really looking at that and, and, and what policies need to be changed in order to have quality growth, but also maintain the rural aspect of the area. All right, now you're back. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Guider. Okay, Commissioner yeah. Mitchell. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Chris. You know, I had an opportunity to kind of be a part of this whole yes, process, so I just want to say thank you for you, Ron, and, and everybody else. But you, you list a few uh, individuals and or companies that were kind of in the room mm -hmm. when we kind of went through all this entire process. Sure. But, I mean, WSA was in the room, mm -hmm. uh, Greystone and a few others. I mean, so as you stated, <laughs> from the, the, the small entrepreneur to the large corporations, uh, were in the room and were a part of this process, correct? Yes, sir. So with that being said, though, I, I, you didn't state kind of what it is, the branding, I'm assuming you want to wait until that date to say that, or is it out there to say what that is 
because I know I've said it, and maybe I've been in, in error <laughs> in making the statement. But yeah, yeah, the, the idea was to keep it for that for that day. Okay. Um, so because I, I know we're all recorded and all, and so <laughs> we, we don't want to steal the thunder of the day. Um, so I, ideally, that that's where we keep it there. But it, it really is something that. Um, it, it's true about our community. Yes, because it, it actually, mm -hmm. the, the part what I like most, because we struggle with the mere fact of dealing with those of us who are of age, mm -hmm. and also not missing out on those who are the youth and that younger population that's forthcoming. So, because some of us, <laughs> and I know Ron sitting in the room, would, would have went in a different direction, but we understood kind of the future of Douglas County and what it looks like. And that's why we came up with what this, this new branding is what we came up with and, and that's why. Yeah, yeah, I, I was one too, I, I resisted it. <laughs> right, yeah, you, you, saw, you, you sitting on that side with me, I remember, yeah, yeah, yeah so. But we, we wanted to make sure it was something that, you know, like I said, it, it it's true about where we are today, but, right. but it's also more forward thinking. Yes. And also we wanted to look at something that, you know, as we're, we're doing this branding, it's for external and internal partners, but when we talk about external partners, what are those things that are attractive, you know, that are, are, that are will attract to the community uh, and not just make us look like every other um, lo location? So um, so that was part of the, the, the focus effort in, in choosing the, the brand that we chose. And, and each entity will be able to tie themselves within the brand that we created, correct? Yeah, you're, you're already starting to see some organizations. Well, some of the organizations today are making adjustments now yes. um, to, to, um, to, to fit within that today. And so a lot of that will be unveiled on the 22nd as well. Got it. Okay. I just want to stress that. But outside of that, I mean, this was a, uh, a journey, an interesting journey, and I think it was well, um, well done. And I think this is going to be a great thing and a great look for the branding of Douglas County. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I yield back. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments from the board? No, oh. I'll wait. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Director Pumphrey. See you all on the 22nd. <laughs> yes, absolutely. We look forward to being there. Uh, next, uh, we have the approval of the minutes. Uh, commissioners, please take a look at the minutes uh, and uh, be prepared to uh, discuss and approve accordingly tomorrow. Madam Chair? I do yes, Commissioner. Yeah, th thank you. I want to clarify um, something, and this is a comment, and, and, and I'll, I'll put out to um, our, our county clerk, um, in the paper, uh, and, and, and Madam Guider, this is not about you, I want to make sure, I thought I heard one thing in the meeting, what the paper reported, and I want to make sure it's accurate in our meeting minutes. So um, it was regarding the community center um, at Boundary Water, uh, and it was a comment that said that, um, and again, I quote, and this has nothing to do with Madam Guider, that it abates South Fulton, and I thought I heard in the room that it was about the South Side, it was on the South Side which are two separate things, and I, the paper reported one thing, but I thought I heard one thing in the paper, and I wanted to, can we just clarify, um, if you have it in, if you didn't capture it in the meeting minutes, then let it go. Don't, don't force the issue, but I wanted to make sure if it was going to be an official record, let's clarify that, please. I will. I don't believe it was in there, but I'll clarify it. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. I yield back, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. Next we have a, again, I just want to remind the commissioners, please uh, take a look at the minutes and be prepared to uh, discuss and approve accordingly tomorrow. Public hearing is next, uh, tab number four, which is a new alcohol license for J.P. Uh, Lee Road, uh, Lee Road. Uh, Ron Roberts, our planning and zoning manager, please come forth and uh, present this uh, matter to the Board of Commissioners. Madam Chair, Commissioners, good morning. Mm -hmm. good, good morning. Staff is in receipt of a completed packet for beer and wine on the premises at 7512 Lee Road, Lithia Springs, Georgia. The licensee is Jim Herndon, uh, applicant is Convenience Stores Incorporated. The uh, applicant has completed the RAS training. Um, the signage has been posted. Uh, ads ran on the 26th and 31st of July, the 2nd and 4th of August. Everything's here. Okay, any questions from the board? All right, thank you, Direct, uh, Manager uh, Ron Roberts. Thank you so much. Okay, we have 13 business items today. Tab number five, five authorization to create a full-time uh, tag agent and move uh, <coughs> funds from uh, 310 line item into salary. Uh, Commissioner Baker, Tax Commissioner, how are you doing morning, today? Good morning, good morning. Good morning. This is just a process where I have money in my budget. I wanted to move it from one line item to salary. And I was told I had to come before you guys to do that. 
the salary is going to be $24,000, which is about $11.56 an hour. Round it off to $12. That's what we're paying people now. Um, and this, would cr this is created by the Dealers Association got approval to do their own electronic dealer stuff. And unfortunately, they're hiring a lot of our people because they're trained. And they're paying them like $14, $15 an hour. And every dealer has to have this now. What they've run into is some problems where the dealers don't know exactly what they're doing. So they're throwing it back on us. And as Ms. Geiner knows, a lot of times they just throw stuff back on you. They don't ask you, they just throw it as you guys have seen through a dry program where they said we had to pay for our own equipment, computers, and thank you again for that because we're ahead of the game and our uh, county also have two trainers on that program. So thank you again for that. So basically I'm trying to create a new full-time position. Uh, as you know, most part-time people that's been there a while want to be full-time because they want the benefits. And we just need to step up and make some of these people full time. So basically, I'm moving money from one line item to salary. Okay. That's it. Any questions or comments from the board commissioners? Okay. Commissioner Guider. Yes, Commissioner uh, Baker. Uh, was this a BIR in your budget for 2018? It's actually in my uh, machine and equipment. You guys got I don't think you can transfer uh, from the that category of a line item into salaries. I only can do it with your approval. Well, uh, we have a budget process, mm -hmm. and I understand that uh, uh, how, how hard that office works. Uh, you might want to suggest that the dealers correct their own mistakes <laughs> since right. they instigated them. But anyway, um, if it wasn't in a B BIR, and many of the BIRs for all the departments have not been approved this year, uh, there's been other elected officials that have asked for additional help, and we, we've got them on hold. I do not think it's fair that we let you allow one department over another that did it, had it in their budget to begin with. And it was approved, but we did not fund it, so it, it hasn't come about. Um, I have dirt roads in my county, in, in my area. Um, although there's a lot of paving going on, my BRR, and I don't understand why it was a BIR, it should have just been part of the roads budget, but um, was to put calcium chloride. Well, that got cut. All the people that live on my dirt roads have suffered from dust. Thank goodness it has rained a little bit more this year. But I'm having to wait. Tammy Howard's having to wait. Other departments are having to wait. I think this should be put off and, it, and be part of your 2019 budget. Wow. And it's not pointing you out or breaking you out. In fact, it's making you equal with all the other elected officials. I understand. And let me say this. I had stuff in BIRs, too, and those were cut also. This one's already in my budget. Um, and I, but it's under, and I, I can be it's honest. under equipment. I'm, it's under let me, equipment, let me finish. not salaries. Let me finish. I'm not going to make a big deal out of this one. Mm -hmm. It's not one of those issues that I'm going to fight for uh, because when the new budget, which is due to come up, mm -hmm. Uh, I will not put a lot of stuff in BIRs, which I was asked to do, probably like you were did, mm -hmm. asked to do. I will put it in the salary line item. Um, but I'm not going to go you overboard about what I'm I understand. Saying. You I understand. understand what, okay. But I'm not going to go overboard about this one. I would like it done now. If you don't do it, it's fine. Okay? okay. But I'm, I was told I had to come up here and request it. That's what I'm doing. And if you do it, fine. If you don't, it's not one of those things I'm going to argue with you about. Well, I have other I, issues that 
I can come up and really <laughs> go at it with you, but this is not going to be one of those. And, and I understand, and I hope you understand that we have to be fair to everybody. Uh, and we treat one person one way, we've got to treat all of them. We treat one elected official one way, we've got to treat them all the same. Well, you got to understand that different elected officials' offices are run differently. They have different issues than what I have. So you have to treat them with their issues and me with my issues. That's the only other thing I would say. So don't throw me in the pot with other elected officials. You have to look at my office and tell me what you can do for my office. Okay? That's it. I yield back. Okay. Any other comments from the Board of Commissioners? Sure. Commissioner Robinson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I, I appreciate you coming before um, the Board of Commissioners. Um, uh, it is an, a necessary process, and we appreciate you. And, it, and it's important that, you know, I, I respect people who advocate what they believe for. Um, you know, each of us have to take a position. We will render a decision from our viewpoint, uh, one vote per person on this. And so I appreciate your consistency in advocating um, for what you believe in. Um, because if you don't do it on behalf of what you believe, then it, it won't get done per se, because everybody's not gonna, it's not gonna be conveniently done that way. When you have limited resources, and you got 10 elected officials for the sake of the conversation, it's not going to be treated equal, right? It's about equitable because, again, you're going to have $1, 10 needs, right? So somebody's going to come up short, right? Let's not be delusional how this works. We're too mature for this, right? And so I just want to ask for what you're asking for. Don't back off. We'll make the decision accordingly and stuff. But it's just one of those I had to state that, that no, I get it. I understand what you're trying to do, and we'll make our own independent um, um, assessment on it and go from there. So I, I just want to yield, Madam Chair, and just clarify. I, I hear what you're asking for, and I appreciate you coming before us and, 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 and advocating on behalf of what you believe. I yield. Okay. All, all right. Thank you, Tax Commissioner Baker. I believe you're that's welcome. it. Thank Did you. Okay. Thank you. Tab number six, authorization to create a position in the Juvenile Programs Administration Department title case manager specialized services. Uh, Mrs. Jenny McDade. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. As I'm um, working on job descriptions, um, I have realized over the years that we haven't updated job descriptions in a long time in my department, and we're trying to um, look at all of those positions now and make sure that what those current employees are doing match what's in their job descriptions. And so um, I met with um, Frederick um, and we've talked and I had met with Mark and want to create a new position um, that will better match the needs that we currently have in our office. Um, the job description will be um, titled Case Manager Specialized Services, and I'm sort of taking part of one position I had and adding duties um, to that position that makes it more um, current with the needs that we have. Okay. Any questions from the Board of Commissioners? Commissioner Guider? <laughs> Jenny. <clears throat> The same thing that applies to the tax commissioner, I think, applies here, too. Uh, could this not wait until the 2019 budget and you do the adjustment for 2019 that is what, uh, six, five months out? Um, what I'm doing is leaving a, a, the old position open. I'm not going to fail. I have a current position that is open in my department. <laughs> Um, that I'm not going to fill. And so what I'm doing um, is creating a new position, and I had met with Mark, and we've gone over the budget, and it's not going to cause an increase this year. You're saying you had it in salaries yes. budget? Yes. Um, we've had several. I've had but it's a, it's a new position that will go forward. Yes, ma'am. Uh, but I have funding currently in my budget that's not been utilized because I've had two people resign and there's been periods of time where they've not been paid. 
those two positions have not been paid because we've had to wait to advertise, interview, and do all of those things. And so one of those positions I'm actually just leaving open. I'm not going to fill it. Mm -hmm. You don't intend to fill it? I don't intend to fill the, the old position. But with the extra money that I have in my current budget that I have not spent on salaries, it won't cause an increase in this year's budget. Okay, I yield back. Okay. Madam Chair, Thank you. if I may. Yes. Jenny, correct me if I'm wrong. So what we discussed was this is a succession plan. That's correct. Because um, you were planning on retiring. Um, so, so you mm -hmm. hire this, this new position um, and I think we were about $17,000 short. You had the funds in your budget. Yes. So the $17,000 is per year. So if you take half of it this year and roll it over half of it for next year, then technically this move would be budget neutral. She would leave the existing job open. Once she retires, then things would be worked out as far as <coughs> who would take her place or who would be the new director. And at that point, this move would be budget neutral. Thank you, County Administrator, for explaining it explaining that uh, to the Board of Commissioners. You finish? Well, uh, just one, one other point. Uh, Mark, would you explain uh, in the, the budget process about the transfer of funds? Out of, uh, salaries are a different category than the uh, operation uh, and what the policy of the county is on that? Um, Jennifer, you Hallman may have to help me, but as far as Jennifer, the Board of Commissioners can make the decision to move that money into salaries if they so choose. Well, Our director is coming up with uh, finance and she'll explain it to you, uh, Commissioner Guider. Thank you, Director Hallman. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, Good morning. Yes, Mark, uh, County Administrator is correct. Um, our policy is that money going out of or into salaries has to have the uh, approval of the Board of Commissioners. So it's not a normal budget process. That uh, Correct. You can, uh, an elected official or a department head, they can move money around in the operations without coming before us. Correct, we but do that on a daily basis with emails and requests. We move money from within their operations. But to transfer it out of salaries, down In to or out of salaries. We even have it, come, if you know if somebody has a vacancy and they need to buy some piece of equipment, they still have to get approval from Mark for it to even be moved out of salaries. But to be moved into salaries requires the Board of Commissioners approval. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're back, mm -hmm. okay. Any other questions before we move on? Uh, you can move to the next one, uh, Mrs. McDay. Thank you so much, and that'll be tab number seven. Uh, authorization to accept the 2018 JAG grant in the amount of $16,424 and amend the budget and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. No match required. Okay. This is a, the JAG grant, the Justice Assistance Grant that we get. Mm -hmm. um, they were late in getting it this year because they had some type of lawsuit um, that they had to settle. So um, we're going to get an, actually another JAG grant too very shortly um, to make up for not the one that we didn't get last year. Um, there is no match. Um, we use this funding to uh, work with our link program where we work with families, any family in the community that has an issue with their children and they need additional services. We have a team that meets um, that has all of the local professionals involved and we staff those cases with the families and help get them resources and sometimes we pay for services for the children um, that need extracurricular activities or tutoring or different types of things. Mm -hmm. Any questions from the board? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mrs. McDade, you're welcome. Uh, tab number eight, authorization to accept the quote provided by Axon quote Q-169352-2 for replacement taser gun cartridges. This uh, quote covers a five year span, uh, span locking the price which has increased each year and the quote uh, amount is $62,400. Uh, Major Holmes, good morning. Good morning, Madam Chair and fellow commissioners. Um, 
this is to uh, try to keep us to save a little bit of money. Uh, on average, it's been going up about four to seven percent a year, and so we were trying to get it locked in where we can try to save a little bit of money over the next five years with this contract. The reason it's brought before y'all. Okay. Any questions, uh, Commissioner Robinson? Thank you. I'm curious about the use of this this tool. Have we ever had to discharge these tools? Do we use them often? Do we? I mean, how, I mean, do we have to? Re are we replenishing them, or do they like run out like batteries? How how do they work? We just had to uh, replace a number of our tasers. According to my training director, we have about 190 tasers that are assigned to officers at the sheriff's office. Mm -hmm. And that's from the jail and also on the law enforcement side. Okay. And for this particular thing, if you'll notice, there's like 400 in the contract um, tasers. Well, everybody has to, for whatever reason, you're required, you have to use two different tasers in training. And then the 100 tasers are the ones that we use that are the duty tasers. Okay. So with that said, uh, it is used. I, I do the use of force reports for the sheriff's office. Um, but 100 is what we are budgeting for the year. So we use less than that. Okay. And we believe, but sufficiently, this, should, this, this contract, you're comfortable with the provider. Um, the taser is working the way it needs to be worked. I mean, again, trying to get some, some understanding around the tool itself. So, but you're comfortable with the taser itself, um, not, yes. this is talking about the cartridge, I understand, but the, the tool itself, you're comfortable? Yes. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna yield. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. Any other questions from the board? All right, thank you. We'll go to number, tab number nine. Tab number nine is authorization to submit the renewal application for the Western Regional Traffic Enforcement Network grant for the Sheriff's Office from the Governor's Office of Highway Safety, which is GOHS, and amend the budget and authorize the Chairman to sign all related documents. Major Holmes again. This is a 100% reimbursement grant, $20,000. We've been getting uh, for the at least the last 10 years that's used for training and equipment uh, for us and the agencies that are a participant of the region. Western Regional Traffic uh, Enforcement Network. I believe John Jewell told me Friday, I think we got like 32 agencies in this network with us, so it's utilized among, amongst us. Okay, thank you. Any questions from, uh, from the Board of Commissioners? <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Uh, tab number 10, uh, authorization to approve a claim for a property tax refund for ResMed as recommended by the Board of Assessors and Tax Commissioner and authorize the Chairman to sign all related documents. Director uh, Waldrop. Drop. Thank you, Madam Chair. Oh, you are so welcome. Good morning. This is a little different in that um, the Tax Commissioner wouldn't sign to agree, he, he did view it and the Board of Assessors denied based on their understanding of the law. Mm -hmm. And let me explain. Mm -hmm. The Freeport application was filed on time. The Freeport application was fi filed correctly with all the proper numbers and the proper you know, slots. The only problem is they did not sign the application. And understanding the Board of Assessor policy and the law for the Board of Assessors understanding was for it to be a completed acceptable form it had to be assigned. And so the Board of Assessors rejected the application. And ResMed's uh, view is that it doesn't have to be signed, that the, everything else was properly filed on time, the number's in the proper place. And if you look at the law it just says it has to be properly filed, it has to be numbers have to be there, have to be filed on time. They don't say anything about the signature. So it's just a legal, legal question, really. And so that's why it's here before you, that one of the ResMed's uh, ways to deal with this is either and through the appeal process, which they, they did go through the appeal process, and it's currently at the appeal process, and through the credit refund. And so it's here before you in the credit refund process, and the request is before you based on the understanding that the form was properly filed in terms of time, numbers, qualifies in every way, just only the problem is the failure to file, sign the form. So that's the basic facts. Okay. 
Any uh, questions uh, from the Board of Commissioners, Commissioner Guider? Yes, Benny, uh, for the public's benefit, uh, Freeport is on uh, goods manufactured here and shipped out of Georgia. That's correct. Okay. Um, and how much are we talking about? I left my computer at home, I'm, at home. A, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, how much was the refund? It's big, it's $687,000. Yeah, but it was just because they failed to sign the document. That's all it is, yes ma'am. Yeah, uh, we all make mistakes. I know we're human. Uh, I think the intent was good on their part that they filed timely. No doubt about uh, that. And I know we've denied people that did not file timely, but the paperwork was there. Somebody just dropped the ball within the company. Uh, did they have Freeport last year? This is... Uh, this is something that has to be filed every year. Every, this is their first time to file that they're a very fairly new company. Can we name the company? Yeah, it's in the paperwork. It's, it's Resmed. 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 It's Resmed? Mm-hmm. Okay. Resmed. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not, I'm not familiar with them, but they manufacture something here in Georgia and then ship it out of, out of uh, the right. state. And this is, the Freeport is actually a state exemption that has to be ratified at the counties. Is that not at a percentage? And we, we have 100%. We have 100% has been voted on by the voters. And uh, like, you, like I said, they, they filed every way perfectly except they failed to sign the form. Yeah. And the Board of Assessors is, is sympathetic, but they feel legally they don't have an option but for it to be sent up to your level. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, okay, I yield back. I don't have any problem with it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good luck. Commissioner Mulk here. Yeah, just, just to reiterate, the uh, reading of the statute uh, requires the completion of the form and, and timely filing and so forth. That it, it, it fails to mention it's got, the form's got to be signed. Is that correct? That's, that's my, that was my reading. I, I read it to prepare for this meeting. Okay. And that was Resmed's position. It would be was Resmed's position. It would have been that in court if it proceeded because it didn't say the signature. Okay. Any other questions from the board, yes. Commissioner um, Mitchell? Yes. Mm-hmm. Ken, I don't, I don't. This is more for you. Have you had a chance to look this over or? Yeah, uh, uh, well, not this specific one, but if I can ask two questions, I think I can answer. I'm ready. Are we talking about PT 50 PF? Is that the application form? Yes. The, 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 I don't know this. I, I agree. I've talked with Bob earlier about gen generically about signature and whether the statute evades that, but the state requires the form to be filed, and I will tell the Board of Commissioners. Um, the, the form has an oath in it. You're swearing that the contents of the application are true and correct. So without it, it is an incomplete form whenever it's being filed. Section 10 says oath of person making an application for exemption, and it goes on to swear that the affirmation is true or not true. In this case, it looks like the intent was to file it. But I don't think that the, the BOA can rely on it anyway until someone under oath swears to the content because they're asking for exemption of certain goods unless that is identified properly by somebody under oath, then we're assuming the contents are true. You agree with me, Benny, on that? That's why the board of assessors That's didn't That's probably file. why y'all rejected it. That's yeah. correct. So it, it, let me just say this. I think the statute doesn't say signature, but the form the state requires under the Department of Revenue regulations is PT 50 something is an oath application, requires signature and dating and swearing to an oath. Without it, I, I think the Board of Assessors would be on foggy ground to start relying on papers that are unsigned. So if the Board is inclined to say their intent was well and good, I'd want something signed under oath. And the question now would be, would they sign the same thing they signed timely before or not, or has it changed? That would be an interesting question to look at. In other words, I wouldn't, they file one form. If we go back to them and say, you need to file a form, but somebody signs it and they change anything, I wouldn't grant it because it's a different application. If they're simply reconfirming the form because of failure of signature, then it's a, it's a, it's a judgment call. 
Does that make sense? I mean, I get it. I'm just trying to, to process this to make sure that, okay, so where we are now is you're coming before us to, I guess, move forward with this credit. I'm assuming the tax commissioner and you guys feel like we shouldn't based on their signature. Yeah, the recommendation to the commission is the Board of Assessors has denied it on legal grounds, mm -hmm. and I think the tax commissioner concurred and did not sign off on it. So it's not coming to you as a recommendation. It's being put in front of you to make a determination. Okay. Um, I see you, Attorney Fowler. Do you have a comment or? I do. I've got some information that may address what Mr. Bernard just mentioned, if it's all right. Yes, you, you right. may. Mm -hmm. I'm Joe Fowler. The Development Authority received the communication for ResMed. I've spoken with their lawyer. After the BOA Board of Assessors turned down the request, it went before the Board of Equalization. Parties appeared on behalf of ResMed and confirmed that the data was correct. And then the Board of Equalization ruled in favor of ResMed. And then the Board of Assessors have it on appeal to the Superior Court. So the data is correct. It was, as Commissioner Guider said, just an oversight on their part failed to execute. If the requirement is the refund can be granted subject to their now signing the form, I'm sure they do that because that was the testimony before the Board of Equalization. Can I ask a question while Joe's there, Madam Chair? Sure. Yes. Joe, what is being litigated in Superior Court right now? The Board of Assessors is seeking to overturn the decision of the BOE. Regarding the failure of signature? Yeah. So if it's in the courts, why is it coming to us for signature? Are we trying to bypass something? The Board of Assessors apparently has now determined that if the Board of Commissioners will grant the refund, that case would be dismissed. I got you. Yes. So, so let me go back to my back to my Q and A though. So, so where where should we, where are we with this though, Ken, from a legal perspective? And I, I hear what you're saying, Joe. So. Well, here's what I think is going to happen. I think the because the DO, the regulations that support the underlying statute require an oath. The oath when the application was it's got to be done by a date that's certain, right, Benny? Am I correct? That's correct. That date's come and gone. Is that correct? That's correct. So the date's come and gone. The form was incomplete when received. I, I think on legal grounds, it's likely that the courts will probably reject the argument. Having said that, I think what the Board of Assessors is saying is they're bringing to you something in good faith. They appear to have submitted everything timely. Somebody forgot to sign the form. Mm -hmm. What Joe's now saying is they would sign the form right. as it was presented, so no, with no changes if y'all want to overcome it, then you know, it's purely, and if, and purely if, discretionary. And if that's the case, then that, that'll put everything back in line and hopefully moving forward, we can kind of hopefully make sure these signatures are all done prior to this type of a situation, if I'm hearing you correctly. Well, if, yeah, if you, uh, um, let me say it another way. If okay. you apply for a homestead exemption with the tax commissioner's office and you don't do it timely, you don't get right. it for the year in question. That's correct. So, you're creating an exception by virtue of the fact that the form was not properly timed. Is the intent, is it the same as just not applying for homestead timely, or is it the same as going up there and there being a clerical for forgetting to sign something, but you went, you know, I, I don't want to lean you because I, I, I the law is, to, to, me, it, to me, it needed to be time, and I agree with the Board of Assessors mm -hmm. and the Tax Commissioner. The form had to be signed by a date certain. Correct. It was not signed by a date certain because it's an oath. Uh, it was timely submitted, but it wasn't complete. So then the question is, you know, how do y'all want to treat that? Right. What, what, do you know what date was that the actual submission occurred, Benny, by the way? Postmark April the 3rd, which was a deadline for Freeport. Okay. So it was postmarked and received after the deadline. So even if the staff had called the failure of signature, it would have been beyond the time frame. No, as long as it's postmarked April 30th, it's still fine. Yeah, no, I know. But I'm saying, let's say y'all get it three days, five days later in the mail. You look at it and it's not signed. We got April the 12th. It had, you had to have it by April 12th. You got it on April 12th? Come to, come come to the mic yeah. so we can hear you. Yeah. You, you received it on April 12th? Uh, it, was mailed, it was mailed April the 3rd which was the deadline for filing Freeport. 
We didn't receive it in our office until April the 12th. Okay, my question is this. So if you got it on April 12th and you found there was an error, there was no way to correct the error timely because you already passed the deadline, correct? Correct. That's correct. correct. Okay. And so in that vein, we're here now trying to decide on how, I mean, because they're willing to sign now to get back in order, but as we stated, uh, back in line rather, uh, but as stated as um, uh, exemptions, uh, filing for homestead, if you miss the deadline, you miss the date, you miss the time frame, so you miss. I mean, that's what we're trying to say in, in this case in point, based on the tax commissioner and the, and the board of assessors, correct? That's their feeling based on the law. They right. understand the law. But how could we have done uh, uh, our due diligence outside of the time frame, I guess, when they sent it over? It was a, after the date that we could have caught it and said, hey, guys, you know you didn't put the signature there. They're trying to be good stewards. Uh, great customer service. How could we have, what could we have done better? The best uh, we could have done is call. April the 12th when it came in, we could have called them on mm -hmm. that day. Mm -hmm. They could have filed, signed it. They would have got 66% anyway because... Uh, you, you lose 33% uh, that first month after the deadline. But if you will go ahead and sign it in that month, you know, if they'd have signed it April the 13th or 14th, they would have been credited for 66% of the free port amount. Was that offered? No, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't notify them at all because <laughs> we didn't, we didn't finally catch it probably until the mid, middle part of May. Which was so June. our staff didn't catch it until later on? That's correct. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> All righty. Okay. And Joe, back to these guys are willing to step up and, and, and thank you, Penny, step yes, up and, and do the right thing and try to get back in line, but. It is simply an oversight. It's sort of like this. If I go apply for Homestead, I'll go downstairs to the window or at the new office now. And if I forget to sign it, one of the nice folks at the office would say, don't forget to sign here. Mm -hmm. The problem with the Freeport applications is almost all of them are done by mail. They have extraordinary calculations they have to do between the first of the year and mm -hmm. the deadline date. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't say it's a comedy of an errors. It's just an unfortunate circumstance, not for an individual citizen, but for a hugely important business citizen mm -hmm. who is simply saying, oh my goodness, can you imagine what the person who missed it mm -hmm. is saying? And it's Douglas County saying in return, we're not going to do you any special favors, but we're going to create a business friendly environment. And it really comes down to that. I totally understand what Mr. Bernard is saying with respect to the affidavit. But it's a situation where it's the sort of same thing as a homestead exemption. Mm -hmm. It's not here on time. You need to overnight something to us with an explanation or something. And so. ResMed is requesting the county to essentially grant that refund. Joe, before you go any farther, I, I had heard rumors they had been offered at less than 100%. Is that true or not true? I, because I, since we're going to talk about it in the public meeting, we need to know what's on the table. I haven't heard that anything is on the table. Well, the reason why I ask is this. The Board of Assessors is recommended no, the Tax Commissioner is recommended no, and the politicians are being asked sort of on camera without knowing any real underlying details. Have there been any offers by ResMed other than they'd like to see this granted? Do you, do you know? Well, their lawyer unfortunately got called to court in Oglethorpe County. I've been working with him for about three weeks. I don't know anything about any proposals. I just know the BOE decision which granted the Freeport exemption mm -hmm. is on appeal. I don't know any of the discussions otherwise. And we appeal the, the when I say we, the Board of Assessors appealed the Board of the Equal, Board of Equalization corrected and accepted the late signature. Correct. Then the Board of Assessors affirmatively appealed. Correct. So if the Board of Assessors had done nothing, the Board of Equalization's ruling would have made would have been the final say so. Yes, sir. That's correct. Okay, um, I just think there, there's a little bit more work here, though, but I, I'll yield with some further comments, but I'll yield. Okay. Madam Chair, I'd recommend this board, if, it, if it's not sure what it wants to do, to table this till we know what's going really on right. behind the right. scenes. Okay, I just, uh, you say that again, you recommend what? Say that again, uh, legal counsel. Well, I and I don't want to cut anybody off for some of us all, but 
I, I think unless y'all know what you want to do, if you're unsure, we should table this until we figure out what the underlying, because we don't know enough about the facts, to be frank, exactly. other than I'm looking at a form. Right. So. Right. That's a little more. Okay, I had, um, um, Commissioner Guider had a question for um, Attorney Fowler, if he's still available. Does she have one question? Well, yeah, I think you, Benny can okay? answer it. Oh, Benny, if you could answer this question for Commissioner mm -hmm. Guider, then I have uh, Commissioner Robinson next. Benny, at the time your office received the uh, exemption application, you had to open the envelope in order to stamp the date received on there, right? That's correct. And did anybody glance down there just to see if at least it looked like it may be in order at that? Because at that time, it was in your office. Yeah, we had it, like I said, by April the 12th. As far as I know. It took from April the 3rd to April the 12th for you to receive it in the mail? That's correct. I so it wasn't that. a local office that was... Uh, obviously it, not. It was, must have been from corporate office. At that time, when you discovered the error, I don't. Did you go back to the company and offer them at least the 66 percent because it was in your office as of uh, the 12th? I don't. I don't believe that took place. Talking to my personal property people, they didn't do it. You do not think? Let me. We did not do his that. His chair was squeaking. <laughs> It looks to me like that was not done from our part. Okay, but did the Board of Assessors even talk about that possibility that uh, had y'all just looked at it and saw that it wasn't signed, you could have contacted them immediately and at least have offered the 66%? The discussion may have taken place, but that was some time back. I would say it was possibility, but I couldn't swear to it. Hopefully we did talk about that. Yeah. I do know this, that we have uh, updated the policy to say that we have like 150 Freeport applications come in every year. They're but gonna they be, don't all come in the same day. But no. I mean, a lot of them do procrastinate, and some of them hand deliver. Most of them come in right around the deadline. But it doesn't matter when they come in, between January and April, they will be reviewed for everything mm -hmm. just, to, just to make sure the signature is there. But this was a new company that was new to new, Georgia? New to Georgia, new to file, and, and all the rest. All right. I yield back. Okay. Commissioner Robinson. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm just going to make a statement. I'm going to agree with my peers that you know, I had already purposed that we should table this. But it, it's one of those where I'm, what, it's something that um, counts, um, the counselor Joe Fowler said about um, business friendly. And there's this concept, and this is one of the roles, and I'll, I'll, again, I'm going to address a little bit later, but what is the real role of a commissioner, right? We're, we're, we don't run the day-to-day -day of government, right? There's a balancing act between the administration of a 1,000 people, and there's the people. And our job is to balance the two, not be too close that we can't separate and see what's for what. And, when I, when I, and, and, I, and I, as I listen to the process, I'm hearing a letter of the law. And it's a machine, and it's a monopoly, and it rolls, right? And it's like, well, this is what, law, this is what it says, this is what it says. But it's like these are, wait. And there's a balancing act, and so there's some discernment that has to occur, right? Now, now I appreciate, you know, it's like it's being locked up to the Board of Commissioners. Well, this is what it says. Nobody wants to make the call, but okay, that's what we're here for. Okay, I got it, all right? And, and, and as they, so, you know, someone's always going to get disappointed either way. But it, it begets the point. It begets the, the, the point, which is what do we do in these situations where, hmm, do we grant the exception or don't we? Do we give consideration or don't we? We can play the letter of the law, but there's sometimes there's the spirit of the moment, and it just pretends. And so it depends on how is it presented. Is it presented in a way that it sounds like you guys were working together, sounds like it's amicable, it, 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 it seems like you know, because we've had these situations before, maybe in different cases, where things get escalated beyond us. <laughs> you know, we know this in a prior administration, a phone call comes up from up, there, up state down. We've probably gotten some here that I'm probably just not aware of. Right? It becomes political. Right? And so I, I guess 
that to Ken's point and to Commissioner Mitchell's point and everybody else's point, which is okay, if I got to make this type of call, y'all gonna have to give me way better information than this, because this is, this is almost like a setup, right? And it's like, okay, I need full information, right? We've had these conversations, but okay, now, are you telling me everything? Or are you withholding, right? Th this is important, right? So if I'm gonna make a call like this, and I got to weigh in, again, I'm just one vote, I need to make sure I've got all the information, which I have no problem making the call, but let's make sure we've got everything. So I just want to, I'll let, you know, I'll, I'll yield to Madam Guider. I mean, she's always been one that I respected as it relates to the digest and how the task commission's office work, and so I, I let that be. And so if she, you know, so I'm listening to what she has to say about how the operation should work. And I'm listening, she's, I mean, everybody's coming short of like, okay, guys, could we have done better than this? Like, really? My bad. I was like, come on, guys. And that's the point of balancing the administration, which is a monopoly, against the public. And it's our job, like, okay, how do we balance this? So uh, that being said, hopefully, are we, uh, I'll yield to somebody else who wants to make the table, Madam Chair, to a time and a date certain. I guess my question is, is this time sensitive for us to respond, seeing that it was going before the Superior Court? Do we need to, res do we need to take an action, since it's before us, before the Superior Court? Can you answer that, uh, yeah, Attorney Fowlers? Is this time sensitive? Please. I don't think there's any impending court hearing at all, but I, I do think that it's exceptionally important to ResMed and that you can get the information you need between now and the voting session tomorrow. Yes, okay. If that's Did y'all hear acceptable. That? Okay. Tomorrow, okay. Well. I I'm going to yield the floor and let my peers weigh in and whether or not we're going to keep going. Then it doesn't sound like we're tabling this. It sounds like we're going to make a decision going into tomorrow. And I just want to make sure y'all heard what just was said. And if you need a different position, please weigh in. I yield. Okay. Commissioner Guider. <laughs> Joe, yes, um, in a lot of cases, it goes to arbitration rather than superior court, right? Yes, ma'am. So is there a big possibility this will go to arbitration before goes to, well, you file in the Superior Court and then they ask that you go to arbitration. Is that the way it works? Uh, the statute currently says you can elect to go to Superior Court or elect to go to arbitration. The BOA elected to go to Superior Court, but the parties could certainly elect some option. There'll be mediation in all likelihood required by the Superior Court judge. I know ResMed's schedule is not yours, of course, but based on the information that we are provided through the Development Authority, this is a huge issue for them. And, and if this is um, allowed, it will actually inflate the digest. Uh, um, do we officially have the digest? So this would, uh, um, this would inflate that digest. So uh, we, we're in the process of setting our millage rate. This is for 2018 or, or Seven, for next year? 17, I believe. It's Pardon? for the pre port exemption for last year. Oh, it's for last year. Yes, ma'am. Uh, did they file timely this year, 2018? I, I don't know any information about that. Did they? Okay. So this is money that we've already Yes, ma'am. It's a refund. <laughs> <laughs> we've already counted on. <laughs> All right. All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right, this is definitely a process improvement opportunity on behalf of, uh, on our side, I Madam should Chair. say. Yes. Madam Chair, I make a motion to uh, table this till our next uh, work session meeting in, uh, uh, what's the next month, September? Second. M M Madam Chair, technically, this is not a voting meeting. But oh, y'all can. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, we're down here, yeah. so that's all about tabling. Because we're up here. My bad, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Then we're, going to, then we're going to discuss table. You can table, yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. So, Madam Chair, that, just to be, make sure Lisa's got this, we just need to move this to the next yeah. agenda. It's an administrative the table. The second month. Yeah. Administrative okay. Second table. month to get yeah, us Yeah, if it's an administrative table, it would just come off for public consumption. Okay. Until I'm used to sitting up here <laughs> making motions. <so. laughs> 
Okay. Fair enough. Certainly. I, well, definitely I want to interject as well. I believe this is a process improvement opportunity on uh, the county side. So we can certainly, I believe I heard May, we held this application all the way to May before we determined there was not a signature there. And I'm uh, hoping that our process will, this is a process improvement moment where, because there's only two pages, I had an opportunity to ask about this document earlier. So I'm quite sure we could look at two pages and if we saw or see a missing signature, we could react and, and call that uh, company. Uh, because I want to maintain that business friendly environment in Douglas County. That is what our goal is. We work so hard and so diligently to get these companies to come to Douglas County. And we certainly don't want to put a bad taste in our mouths or theirs. But we, um, so I know we will table this and, and discuss it in two weeks. And uh, Board of Commissioners, I just uh, ask that you take an opportunity to ask all the questions that you need within the next 14 days so we can make a decision. Thank you so much. Okay, next we'll move on to. The next item is tab number 11. Tab number 11 is authorization to apply for Keep America Beautiful 2018 Litter Law Enforcement Grant in the amount up to $2,000 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Um, Director Stanley, how are you doing this morning? Good morning, Chairman Jones and Commissioners. Um, Tiffany Stewart Stanley, um, Department of External Affairs. Um, we uh, are before you today um, because the Keep Douglas County Beautiful Board is in the process of completing our community action plan for 2018 through 2019. One of the priorities that we have identified in that plan is making sure that we have proper training and um, information for our um, board. Um, one of the uh, items before you today is the Litter Enforcement Workshop Grant. This grant is for $2,000 and it will provide um, a workshop for all law enforcement, code enforcement, um, highway patrol, and any other interested parties in Douglas County. Uh, we've been working with the Sheriff Department um, um, with our plan and we want to make sure that everybody is properly trained um, and so we're asking the Commission to approve the um, ability to apply for this grant. Okay. Thank you. Any questions from the Board of Commissioners? No, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, we'll press on to the next one, which is uh, tab number 12. Authorization to accept the 2018 Waste Management and Keep America Beautiful WasteCon Conference Scholarship Grant in the amount of $1,000 and amend the budget and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Stanley again. Yes, Chairman. Um, this is also in line with our priority of making sure that we have proper information. There have been a lot of changes recently with recycling, um, with some international changes with um, the acceptance of plastic um, from some of our domestic, um, international partners. Um, so Keep America Beautiful is hosting a workshop in Nashville um, in, on August 19th and August 20th as part of the WasteCon conference to make sure that Keep America Beautiful affiliates are properly trained um, and make sure they have the techniques to properly engage the community. Um, this grant would be $4,000. It would cover all travel, hotel, and out-of-pocket expenses um, for that um, conference. So we're asking that um, the commission approve the acceptance of the grant. Okay. Any questions from the board? No, ma'am. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Tab number 13. Commissioner Guida. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you. I didn't see you. Okay. Commissioner Guida has That's a question okay. for you. You said this is for your board? No, this, I will travel to um, Nashville on August the 19th. And, and the grant's for $1,000, $1, but it's gonna cost $4,000? Oh, no ma'am, no ma'am. It's, okay. it's going to cost, I believe it will, the, the uh, conference is free. It will pay for, I will stay one night, will also p pay for my airfare, any meals, any insodons. It probably won't even be $1,000 because I'm only staying one night because I have to come back the next day to go to the, to the Georgia Congressional Luncheon. So um, I will only be staying one night even though it's, it'll be, you can actually, you have the option well, of staying a second night. What did you say about $4,000? I, I didn't, didn't say, say no. I'm hearing the <laughs> No, the, the first grant was for $2,000, and this one is for $1,000. Okay. Maybe the one sounded like a four. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Director um, Stanley. Um, next, we have tab number 13, authorization to enter into an intergovernmental agreement with the city of Douglasville for the pre provision of election services and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Kidd. Milton Kidd, are you here? Hmm. Uh, he's not here. I'll take care of this. Uh, okay. Madam okay. Chair. okay. Thank so this you. is a intergovernmental agreement with the city of Douglasville. We, I think, Laurie Fulton had uh, she had sent some either last year or the year before to the city of Elrica, 
Um, so we needed an IGA with the city of Douglasville to conduct the elections in November. This uh, agreement is uh, renewable each year uh, unless either party um, elects not to. And then the city of Douglasville will pay us for all costs incurred to perform the election for the city. Okay. Any questions for our county administrator regarding this item? Yeah, I just, um, okay. Vice Chairman Robson. Yeah, in the event that there's runoffs or anything like that, does it extend to that? Is it like a one-time election or is it for the entire election cycle? How does yes, that work? Yes, it's the whole cycle. Okay. Yes, sir. No matter what the outcomes are. Okay. Thank yes, you. sir. I yield. Okay. All right, tab, num tab number 14, authorization to approve a contract with S&A Express Trans for janitorial services at the Douglas County government, uh, government annex in the amount not to exceed $2,100 per month and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Peacock, good morning. Yes, ma'am. Chairwoman, thank you. And Chair, Chair Commissioners. Okay. Um, with the opening of the new annex, we were in need of a janitorial service. We received quotes from three different firms. Um, um, the low quote was $2,100. Um, we had two firms actually that quoted that amount um, based on the discussions with um, the tax commissioner uh, and other perhaps members of the board. Uh, the decision was made to award that contract to SNA Express, a, a local firm here in Douglasville, uh, and they have been doing the, the janitorial services for us. And uh, uh, this is just to um, legitimize the work that they're doing. The contract is signed, but it, we, we haven't been able to bring it before you until this date. So we're just asking for uh, the commission's approval for, for this agreement. Okay. Any questions from the board? Commissioner yes, Guider. <laughs> uh, Bill. Ma'am. Um, what did you mean they're already doing it? We can't contract with somebody before it comes before the board. Um, the annex opened on the 23rd of last month. Uh, uh, we had already received quotes for the janitorial services. Um, we needed the services to begin. So the contract was executed by both the chairwoman and by the vendor. We, this is the first opportunity that we've had to actually bring it before the full commission to have it approved because um, uh, all contracts and agreements need to be approved by the commission and give the chairwoman the opportunity to execute. This was provided to her in advance of that full board approval so that we could actually have, have the services begin. So yes, we got the cart before the horse on this. So we're, we're just coming now and asking for the full board to approve um, the award of a contract on a quote basis. It wasn't a bid, it was just a quote basis to a local firm who is currently doing the, the work at the annex. Uh, who is SNA? Are they a corporation or is it a? It's an LLC. It is an LLC. It's it doesn't a, say that here, so that's why. Okay. LLC. And uh, the other company that had the same bid was what? Uh, I believe they're, they're J&L, uh, and they also, they're, they're not local to Douglasville, but they do do other work for the county. I believe they do the, um, is it J&L that does the ride share building? Okay, I'm, I'm just concerned that we did put the cart before the horse. Is it? I don't. We did. I assume that's legal. Well, it, it will be if you approve it. <laughs> <laughs> well, is it our our decision that makes it legal? I'm. <laughs> I didn't like that remark, uh, Kenny. <laughs> Oh, are we sticking our head, our necks out? <laughs> are we sticking our necks out by approving something that was has already been implemented? I don't understand that. Are we well, legal? I think what they're asking for is ratification of a contract so that we'll be on safe grounds. Right. Without reviewing the contract, I couldn't tell you what the exposure is. It was actually reviewed by you Jennifer. and by Jennifer and approved. 
I yield back. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Robinson. Let me just make sure we're, we're clear, though. When we review contracts, we're assuming there's already board authority behind them. We're just looking at the words in the contract. So I don't know what was sent to us because we get a lot. I don't know. I, I, well, we send but to legal the, the document prior to bringing it to the okay. board. We don't so bring we, it until So we pre-reviewed it, but we, we didn't bless whether the board approved it or not. Okay, guys, I got the floor, so we'll let y'all hold that for a minute. Y'all take that offline. All right, so let me, let me ask a quick question. And, and Bill, you probably know where I'm going with this. What, what was the amount again? $2,100 per month. Per month, all right. To per clean month. the okay. annex building, yep. uh, the, pro the small property management building, yep. and the fleet, fleet offices building. in the so back. it's all three. I, it's, it's not it's just all, new. And it's when all we say free. annex, we mean the whole campus yes, or complex. It's yes, not sir. just that first bill. All right, I mean, I just wanted to clarify. Okay. All right, of the asset that we're cleaning. All right, so are there, That's why we was started. there anything that was, I won't call it, expeditious that we, like, look, we can't wait. Uh, when I think about restaurants or food or hospitals or things that have um, hazards, um, is there anything in those buildings that will require us, like, look, we got to get this thing clean. You just can't leave, whether, whether it's, I don't know, I'm just making it up. I don't know what's back there in Fleet, for example, uh, what, what type of chemicals they may be exposed to. I don't know. Is there anything that, that or is this just normal janitorial services? Emptying the trash can? Talk to me. It's normal janitorial services. Okay. The situation was that uh, we, we did begin early uh, getting quotes for the cleaning of the buildings. Yep. Um, there was a local citizen that took exception to the process and felt that it had not been fair. So then, based on the recommendation from the county administrator and from the um, tax commissioner, we went out and uh, re-requested additional quotes, new quotes. Okay. And so that slowed the process down because we thought we had a decision made. Yep. It was appealed, and we had to do the next step and require and request new, uh, new um, uh, um, quotes. Yep. And that slowed the process down, and that meant that we didn't have it all done prior to the opening of the annex. Okay. All right. And, and so here's, this is, and again, I remember when we got involved in this, and again, I congratulate the, the, my peers who, who were instrumental in sponsoring this, this asset acquisition. You know, my only contribution was to pay, you know, suggest pay cash for it. Um, but that, that being said, it's a building that we already own, right? Yes, sir. All right. So if I already own a building, and I've got services for somebody else. And you say, this person's already providing services for us. And it's like, look, I need you to go pick this up for me right now until I can work out an agreement, meaning a formal contract. So is there some, un I'm, I'm trying to get the understanding because it's, it, it's a building we already owned, right? Um, what am I missing here? It's almost like a gentleman's agreement between us and the vendor. Right. Yes, he's providing the services. He's providing the services, and we, we now and, we need and to ratify. trust that we're going to pay for him right. to provide the services, and we just need the board to ratify that we have the legal right to pay him for his services. All right, I'm done. I yield. Okay. Any Thank you, other? Commissioner Mitchell? Just, just, just one. And, and this contract, if approved, which is already <laughs> being done, um, would it line up with? our annual um, contracts that we have out thus far? Yes, sir. This uh, arrangement's uh, through the end of the year. That's what the contract uh, has a termination at the end of uh, December of this year. Mm -hmm. uh, the purchase order that was been, has put in place to pay the vendor only goes through December of this year. So that uh, agreement will need to be brought back before the full then board it'll, it'll for next be in year. Line with, right, right, right. Then yes, it'll be back in line. Yes, sir. And, um, so, so based on, if I'm hearing you correctly, based off of the mere fact of what happened earlier when we had something supposedly in place, but it was based off not a true um, bid process based on the mere fact of what each 
entity was bidding on. So that's kind of where the, the initial problem in, incurred. Again, the, in the, the initial round of quotes, right. uh, one of the vendors uh, individuals was, was that felt on one piece wanted versus, to versus all or none and all. So I think there it was, was a little confusion. Confusion. So, right. Confusion. So because right. I just want to verify that because I think it looks as though the card is before the horse and really it is. But there was some reasoning as to why. Yes, sir. Yeah. OK. So but with that, to, to fairly rebid it out to make sure that it was fairly bid it on. Now that's where we are. And that's why we're behind in this yes, process sir. because the building would have actually been open. No services would have been provided for what kind of time frame, a month or so? Uh, well, they've been open since the 23rd of last month. So it would, would be now until, I mean, then until now. Right. So, and I think that's kind of where it first incurred, where well, we had some situations to incur though. But okay. All righty. Um, Outside of that, I guess we'll we'll kind of see what this board decides. Thank you again. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? I yield. Sorry. Okay. Any other questions for the Sounds board? Funny. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. We'll go on to tab number 16, authorization to award a contract integrated construction for the construction of the concession stand at uh, Boundary Waters Park for the total cost of seven hundred nine thousand seven hundred forty seven dollars, and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending final legal review. Director Peacock again. Um, let's see. That is number 16. Mm -hmm. Did I skip? I'm sorry. I skipped number 15. Let me go to 15. Authorization to enter into an agreement with the, the loose design for uh, engineering and design services for the replacement of light poles at Fair Play Park up to a maximum of $9,500 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending final legal review. Yes, ma'am. This is um, really in um, regards to what was brought before the board by uh, Commissioner Guider with the fact that the light poles were in such poor shape mm -hmm. at Fair Play Park. So we're trying to expedite this, and we've already gotten uh, a professional design engineering firm looking at it, and they've given us their quote. Uh, they're uh, in the process of doing some analysis to see what would be required to actually replace those poles, uh, and Lowe's design is who uh, submitted the quote to us, so we're asking for your appro approval to uh, actually have the chairman sign that quote saying that we agree to it. Okay. Any questions from the board? Okay. We'll Matt move Bill. on to yeah. okay, Commissioner Robinson. No, the 719 was for the next item, right? Not yep. this item. But yes. I, just for clarity, so this is, we've already signed off on this through the Parks and Rec Committee, and this, this is just, this acceleration has been blessed that way, or? It was blessed by the, by the uh, board. full board. Yeah. Okay. We both. That we should move on this as quickly as possible. Yeah. At our last meeting, uh -huh. when it was brought up that there was a safety issue uh, at the park, that the poles were unsafe, and that we needed to immediately address replacing them. I understand. I'm going to ask again. But with that acknowledging that the board is on board, I'm saying what you're presenting has the, the committee have a chance to look at this since our last meeting. Let me try to do it that way. Have y'all gone back into committee since then? I don't Parks believe the Parks and Rec Committee has met Madam since Chair. then. Do they meet tomorrow or today? Yes, we'll meet tomorrow morning. So it could be an issue so that we could meet be. tomorrow morning to this, and we will discuss uh, 14 and 16, 15, 15, and 16. 15, 16. 15 and 16. Now I was lining up. Okay, so then I'm, 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 this is a work session, so therefore I'll wait to hear what comes out of committee uh, before I have any further questions. So okay. I'm good. Thank you. Okay. okay. Commissioner uh, Moe Care. No, I was just going to address the issue that, that this has not been addressed yet. Right. By okay. the committee. Okay. I you back. All right. Let me try number 16 again. Uh, Director Peacock, authorization to award a contract to integrated construction for the construction of the concession stand at Boundary Waters Park for a total cost of $709,747.34 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending final legal review. Director Peacock, again. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we uh, did uh, distribute a, uh, a solicitation for the construction of the concession stand at Boundary Waters. We received four um, bids back in. The low bid is the one that was submitted by Integrated Construction for $709,747. Uh, 
we believe that they're uh, capable of doing the construction and uh, meeting our needs. So we're recommending that the board um, allow us to approve to award that contract to integrated construction. Okay. Any questions from the board? Madam Chair. Uh, Vice Chairman Robinson. Yeah. Again, I'm just going to um, preface it that I'd like to hear sort of this go through committee. Um, it, it's important to acknowledge um, committees are important um, for, for this administration. Um, you know, the chairmen get to design um, how they want to bring things forward. Uh, their opinions matter, um, meaning the committees. Um, it allows at least one to two commissioners to work alongside of the administration ahead of getting to a full board of commissioners. Um, it, these are not symbolic roles of times past. Um, and so it's one of those where I just, I keep pushing back, say, okay, what does the committee have to say? Because their opinion matters to me. Um, and so those who are maybe on this committee, um, I'm looking to you because you vetted it. I'm looking to you to tell me like, okay, so how did that process work out? And why these guys, so Bill, I'm not putting you on the spot. I, I, I'm just looking for corroboration. You're gonna handle the process like you're purchasing, don't get me wrong, and I think you know the difference. But I just wanted to clarify that, that I, I wanna make sure that the committee weighs in tomorrow. So I yield, Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Okay. Commissioner Mulk here. Um, we will apparently hear this, uh, this issue, this proposal, uh, tomorrow on the Parks and Recreation Committee public invited. Uh, my only comment would be that I would like to see a, a re-sequency re of these uh, issues that come on the work session uh, agenda so that we're not halfway talking about them or, or shooting around the bullseye or prematurely until it comes out of the committee. So, for example, uh, we should have our meeting on this uh, uh, concession stand and restroom uh, facility at Boundary Waters Park. If we were to have it tomorrow, I would prefer to see this on the agenda at the next, next. next meeting. Mm -hmm. These, these uh, bang, bang uh, committee reports, op opinions, kind of puts everybody on the spot. And uh, so just for further consideration, I'd like to see that happen. Okay. I yield back. Clerk, did you, <clears throat> did you hear that? We just will push them out. Uh, Com Commissioner Guider. Yes, Bill, I, I think it's very important that we put the proper name, if it says LLC, if that means they are listed at the Secretary of State's file. Um, and when people, if they wanted to research the names, you know, like the business license or on the tax digest or at the Secretary of State's file, they'll be able to do so. And I just think it's very important on all of these. I noticed with, in number 15, it just says loose design. Are they a LLC? Are they registered here in Georgia? Are they registered um, somewhere else? <laughs> um, and are they are they required to get a business license here if they are doing business here? Aren't they? I don't believe they are. Not as if they're if they have a business license in another county and they're doing work in Douglas County, they don't have to have. But a if they're located here, they're required to have. A business oh, absolutely. license, absolutely, and they're supposed to be on the tax digest uh, as yes. property, personal property and stuff like that. All right, but I just think it's very important, especially when you're researching a name, that uh, we we get the exact legal name, and I hope that's what's put on the contracts. That's, rather, that, uh, that's the comment I was going to make. That the, the entire legal name is placed on the contract. Sometimes we get lazy. Well, <laughs> we, we try. <laughs> It's just important. I, I understand. Uh, because uh, if we're researching something, sometimes it won't, it won't pop up. We can make sure that happens. Thank you. I yield back. Thank you so much, Director Peacock. And tab, last but not least, uh, we have tab number 17, authorization to confirm and approve award by the Atlanta Regional Commission of Infrastructure and Capital Investment Application for fixed route uh, public bu bus service authorization to file a grant application with the Federal Transit Administration for federal congestion mitigation and air quality funds in the amount of $4.8 million and authorize the chairman to sign our related documents. This grant will require uh, a Douglas County match of $1.2 million and will be used to fund proposed fixed route bus service for three years. 
uh, this item was tabled uh, from 7, 20, or July 24, 2018, and uh, today we have Director Gary Watson here today to speak on this issue, on this item. Yes, so thank you. Yes, ma'am. I think. We are, yes, and you're out of order. You're out of order, Mr. Um, Pierce. You ready to go forward? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. I think the agenda item explains pretty well what we're requesting um, this morning. The only thing that I would add is that the application that we would go forward with includes four uh, cutaway uh, shuttle routes, uh, the downtown Douglasville route, the Arbor Place Mall route, um, Thornton Road, Riverside Drive route, <clears throat> and the new Lithia Springs route, which would replace the H.E. Holmes uh, direct route. For the uh, Lithia Springs route, we offered two options, option A and B. This was brought before the Transportation Committee, and they recommended option B. And this particular route would go east on Interstate 20, exit at Lee Road, go uh, south Sweetwater, north to Highway 78, east on Highway 78, and then uh, south on Thornton Road. Now this, this is the route that um, it, would, it would end somewhere on Thornton Road, but we will have to probably dip down into Cobb County uh, to make the connection um, with uh, Cobb Link, which would then provide service uh, on into the H.E. Homes area. And with this route, it would also uh, provide service for Douglas County residents who need to go into uh, other parts of Cobb County, such as over on Austell Road where Cobb Hospital is. But um, this, this route, new route would not go directly to H.E. Homes and would only uh, go into to Cobb County briefly to make that connection. Okay. Yeah. Um, Commissioner Mulcair has a question for you. Yeah. Uh, my recollection is that this particular item 17 that was tabled uh, was the CMAC application to uh, H.E. Holmes Martin Station. The Transportation Committee made a recommendation, which has not been heard yet, that this standing application be modified to include the routes you just mentioned. So is that is that correct? In other words, we had a, we had a transportation recommend, uh, recommendation coming to the board, which hasn't been heard yet, that had to do with deleting the Holmes route and adding, I'll call it the Lithia Cobb Connection route. That's my recollection. This 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 item here that's tabled is embedded in that is the the Holmes Station route. I, I yield. I stand for correction if that's wrong. Okay. Could you elaborate? Well, when Director Watson two two weeks ago when we brought this before you, uh, the new Lithia Springs route and the two options were part of that recommendation that that we brought before you to, at your meeting two weeks ago. We had a vote on this table. No, but it was brought before you, though. Okay. And then, so, then you tabled it then. So, to my point, this item here includes the H.E. Holmes route. Because a modification did, did come forward from the transit uh, committee. Transportation Committee, but that was never, never voted on by this body. Are we just change, just change and modifying applications uh, at will? Okay, you're, uh, you're, you're confusing me. I, I don't know how to respond to that. Okay. How uh, you? Any other questions for the board or comments, Commissioner Guider? Uh, yes, Gary, why options when you're talking about one intersection away from the another? What's the purpose in the options, A and B? Well, <clears throat> the difference in the options is that option A 
uh, gets off at Lee Springs, go to south, goes to South Sweetwater, Sweetwater and right. then cuts up Skyview Drive. And then the uh, option B goes South Sweetwater uh, up to Highway 78. I mean, you're, you're not talking but about a half mile difference uh, in your right turn. So what's the purpose? Well, there's, I mean, there, why? There's not a whole lot of difference in, in the two options. They, they each have uh, a little bit uh, of difference in demographics, but the, the option B route because of the demographics that it offers, it is the route that was suggested um, or recommended by our consultant who, who designed these two options. But um, we, we haven't voted on the Lithia routes yet. So I don't even understand what's before us right now. Um, we have it voted on the route that is in District 1 that's in, in, it's taken the place of the direct line to HE Homes, and that's been put in one district. Um, I haven't heard the commissioner of that district say whether or not he prefers A or B. He's not on the transportation committee, so why did y'all, I'm sure, surely y'all talk to him. But I, I don't understand exactly what's before us because it, it was table, and it certainly shouldn't be a, an agenda item. And uh, I know this is where we would move it out, but well, we could. But it needs to be moved out as a separate item. Otherwise, uh, it could jeopardize the agenda. And we can do that, uh, Commissioner Guider. Let me. I have a question for you. I believe. Hold oh, just one second, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson. Um, didn't you all decide on uh, whether A or B was most appealing or worked best for the citizens' routes? I think, did you all discuss that in your committee? That, that was a transportation community trans recommendation transportation to committee. go with option B, yes, so, ma'am. Oh, so that was your, okay, you said, I just wanted to make sure you said option B, uh, because it's my understanding routes won't be discussed or confirmed until the, the approval of a CMAC grant, and then, of course, uh, a public hearing to allow the citizens to have input and a voice regarding these routes, That's right? That's exactly But I correct. believe B is what we wanted to do, replace that, uh, that uh, B with, homes with, home, with AG right. Homes uh, to compromise and listen to the concerns of the citizens, and you've done that. Thank you so much for that. That's, that, that was very important because I could hear the concerns of the citizens on that particular uh, route, and I'm very, I feel somewhat better. Uh, that has been changed, and that makes me feel bad. I just didn't know if y'all had made a decision. So with that being said, Commissioner uh, Robson, there you go. You can have it. I was just at a question for him. No, it's okay. Um, like I said, I'm going to say most of my, my, my relative comments for the official record tomorrow, but I'm, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'm going to stay on task here um, about what this is about, right? Um, just like before, we can confirm the routes as is. Um, the, the, the process was aimed to give accommodations to everybody, right? For those who didn't want it in their community, so be it. Let them have what they want. Those who didn't want to go outside the county, we tried to accommodate. Those who said, don't make me go around, we tried to accommodate. It's very clear, right? It didn't move, just be random. It was to acknowledge the public. Now, all this, you know, misdirection, missing, I don't have time for that. Today is my 52nd birthday. I have no patience for stuff being on this earth this long when I hear politics. This is simple. We can confirm it with homes in play or as we try to accommodate. We can play that game. Let's be clear. I, and I, I, I do acknowledge my peers, not, I, I don't know if Henry's back or not, I can't worry about that right now because we, we have to be here. He's back. Okay, Henry, you here? Yes, I'm here, All yes. Right. Good, mm -hmm. All right. thank you. All right, so the committee made a recommendation uh, based on the timing of being able to work with Cobb County. It had nothing to do with us. It's just when they were able to get around to us, right? So had they not been able to meet with us, we probably would not have had the option of taking homes off the table. We did. 
we expeditiously is brought before the like, hey guys, we've got a recommendation. Now here's, here's a chance. There is some redundancy. There was never any confusion. I didn't disagree with Commissioner Mulk here that, well, I, I do believe in regionalism, but it was just the fact that because I always knew the 30 was there, we just never got around to having the conversation. It's like, why don't we just plug into the 30? Load their bus up and keep on going. Right? That has always been there. But you let everybody talk. But it didn't change what you knew. It doesn't change your education. Right? You knew what you knew. So here I am, I'm listening to this, and I'm like, okay, guys, there's no confusion, right? It's simply, and we'll work through this. When that's what this whole point is a work session. On the table is that we took homes off the table as a committee. We're gonna come back here and we can ratify and confirm everything on what this is, and we'll clarify that for the vote tomorrow. That's the point of the work session, to work through things to bring it forth, and Gary, tell me if I'm wrong, and that we can work through this. We, because Ken, remind me, and this is the legal question. At the last meeting, uh, we, you had uh, a sentence that you had helped prepare for Gary on for us, uh, for any application that had been minted to that point. Can y'all clarify what that sentence was, or Gary, or Ken? You're talking about the ratification? Yeah, so just, it, was, it was some language. Uh, in, talk, in talking with Gary uh, and this body, I, I said in order to clear up whether or not the uh, Atlanta Regional Commission's uh, award was going to be accepted, that ought to be part of an approval process. And so I think we added the agenda item. And I, don't, I may be wrong. Gary, can you read the agenda item again? We added the first sentence of the agenda item to clarify Right. This is a, I got it, Gary. Okay. Authorization to confirm and approve award by the Atlanta Regional Commission of Infrastructure Capital Investment Application for a fixed route bus, public bus service. Authorization to file a grant application with the FTE, uh, Federal Transit Administration for federal congestion mitigation air quality funds in the amount of $4.8 million and authorize the chairman to sign all related document. This grant will require Douglas County match of 1.2 million. It will be used to fund proposed fixed route bus service for three years. Uh, essentially to answer the commissioner's uh, question, rather than leave it loose as if the FTA grant was somehow a different thing, we combined them all in one paragraph so the public would know what y'all were voting on. Okay. All right, so that was last time. We, we, we the committee did bring before the Board of Commissioners an option. Again, last minute concessions are made all the time. There's nothing new. It's to acknowledge that, look, I heard you, Mike, Commissioner Mulk here. It's been, to, it's, it was acknowledged. Now, we can be convenient, but I won't let, I won't, I won't support a position that we're confused. There's no confusion. Right. There's, there's no confusion. It's okay if people want to take political positions and do what they do. I'm fine with that. But that's not what this is. That wasn't the intent. Um, and again, one more time, we signed off on the recommendation, acknowledging fully what it was. Acknowledging fully what it was to bring it before the full Board of Commissioners. As a supplement, in other words, we were voting last time going straight to homes, but we had a committee meeting prior to, right? And we say, hey guys, let, let's, can, can, we, can, we, can we optimize this opportunity? Can we, can we acknowledge that you, you can't make everybody happy, right? If I've got 35,000 constituents and I've got one, there's always gonna be somebody who wanted a yes and somebody who wanted a no on every decision. Right? We've made over 3,000 decisions, at least in my 10-year time period, 3,000. Right? That means that somebody got a yes and a no. This is nothing new. Right? This is not, it, it was acknowledged, not a me versus you. It's like where well, you got citizen groups, some want it, some don't. Somebody's going to be happy, somebody's not. All right, let's get beyond that. But I, I want to be clear what, we, what we're talking about here. Uh, this is, it's truly, we, we belabor this. We've gone over this. We, I mean, it's like somebody can say it 12 times, doesn't change what you understood their position that they're against it. That's fine. I mean, it, it, it doesn't change. It doesn't give you 12 votes. It gives you, okay, that person has said it 12 times. They're not, they got it. 
next. That's why we're doing the planning and zoning. Like, okay, if you're gonna keep repeating, like, it's not gonna change. We already know what your household says, we're not for it. Got it, all right? So I don't wanna, Madam Chair, I, I think going into this, we, we, we said we'd be sensitive to time, and I'm probably, I don't have a buzzer, but I'm, I'm assuming that it's in my head, it's about that time, that um, we're, we're, we're clear on this. Uh, we, we've, we, we've worn this out, and it really comes down to an up or down. We do need to clarify, Gary, between now and tomorrow, specifically um, the, the option. I know, Commissioner Mitchell, you need to weigh in on this one right now, because there was, uh, there is, you just should. Um, but beyond that, um, we need to make sure that we're clear uh, when we come for the vote tomorrow. Either Holmes is on the docket, which it's not based on our recommendation from the committee, unless somebody wants to put it back in. Um, or uh, we go as is. I yield the floor. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Commissioner Mulcair? Yeah. I, for one, uh, am not confused, and it's certainly not convenient or politics when I state unequivocally this item was tabled from July 24th. It's an evening meeting. It's an evening meeting. And this was the pre-existing application that included H.E. Holmes. Now, two o'clock before that meeting, we had a transportation committee meeting. You were there. Chairman Robinson was there. And that body, transportation committee, recommends, I'm quoting, option B be presented to the BOC as an alternative to the current Route 100 to AT Homes MARTA station. That was never voted on by the BOC because we tabled the main item here, which included the AT Homes. That's all I'm saying. It's perfectly clear this body, this commission, did not vote on option B from the transportation committee. It's crystal clear. The item was tabled. I agree with that, but that's what we're bringing before you today is to have those we four have routes. No, we have to vote. B. We have to vote. At some point in time, we have to vote on option B as a body because that's what the transportation committee uh, sent to the full board of commissioners to vote on. Then we vote on this one here. I yield back, Madam Chair. Okay. And that's, uh, Clerk, that certainly could be inserted into, and uh, let me just follow up with our legal counsel, uh, if we could uh, insert that in, in our um, BOC. I'm sorry, I can't hear. Tomorrow I would like to see if we could just insert uh, voting on that particular, I guess, Route B as uh, proposed by Commissioner uh, Mulcair. Trans no, Transportation Trans Committee. Transportation Committee. Uh, to tomorrow, just have it as a separate item. But for well, you could do one of two things, Madam yeah, Chair. You could important. put a separate item ahead of it, approve the recommendation, vote on it, and then vote on this. But I think for a perfect tie-in, what, what I, the Commissioner Mulcair is saying, if this item is on the table tomorrow, mm -hmm. if there's a motion second made, there needs to be an amendment to it to include the adoption of the Transportation yeah, Committee's report. That way, when the vote is taken, the minutes are clear that you are voting on, I think it was option B, but I may, I may get the options wrong, but it's option, option B. B. It's option B. Okay. So, so it would come up, there'd be a motion second, discussion, a proposed motion to amend, the amendment would include adoption of the Transportation Committee report, and then there would be a vote to amend, and then there'd be a vote on the whole thing. That way the record's clear. Other, or you could adopt a report and then do it again if you want to. But I, I think y'all want clarity in the minutes as to what's being voted on. Yes. Madam Chair. I like your first recommendation better. Madam I'll Chair. just get with you so I make sure I state it accordingly. Madam Vice Chairman Robinson. Yeah, thank you. I want to be clear because we, 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 we're real subtle about this. Okay, so check this out. So for all committees, all right, for every recommendation, we have not voted on every recommendation that has come out of the committees. All right, so if we're going to be, this is where we as committee chairs, and this is where y'all want to play the rule game, and I'm very good at this rule game. If you're going to do that, be consistent across all committees. So if every recommendation comes forth, we either do or we don't. 
We haven't done that. So it's not like some irregularity because we haven't because you want to force the moment. So that's why I'm willing to acquiesce because it's time to move on. But I'm calling it out for what it is. It's like, well, be consistent. And if you'd like to sit down and we can adopt as committee chairs, that we'll make sure that we acknowledge that the Board of Commissions will do that, we'll do that. But to this point right now, it doesn't exist. It can't be convenient for just this one item when we sat here and we went to, I'm like, okay, but you didn't do that one. You didn't do that one. You're being convenient. All recommendations that come from committees, if you want to do that, I'm fine. I'm just calling like, and again, I'm not belaboring it. I'm just making a note. Be consistent. Be consistent. That's why when we were early, and Commissioner Mitchell, you may not have been here when, I, when you were talking, um, we were talking about something coming out, Parks and Rec. And I kept pushing back to, well, what does the committee say? The chair wasn't here, so I was trying to buy time. But the point was, okay, because their opinion matters. Their recommendation is what we're moving on. I'm going back to how our structure doesn't have to be the way the prior administration ran it, right? So I'm back to, well, wait a minute now. Why didn't we, we're, if we're going on the recommendation of what a committee says, then that's what we're going on. You can individually vote against something, but in essence, the committee is what's being presented it for. It's the one that went and did the work and clarified for the decision. It's not, it's not to accept it. That's the whole point of the committee structure. That was the question that Commissioner Mitchell asked you. You sure you want to go to this type of committee structure? Because the power was being pushed down into those committees. All right? So again, I'm okay. I won't belabor it. But I just want to make sure that Bungus, we're consistent. And again, I, I'm not willing to, there's some things it's like, oh, I'm okay with that. I mean, I hear your point. It's like duly noted. But, but again, Let's make it, don't make it seem like it's some irregularity or that we're doing it different or we didn't vote on this. Be consistent with all committees. I yield. Madam Chair. Commissioner Moke here. It's really not a question of consistency or inconsistency in terms of a recommendation coming from a standing committee of the commissioners. I can't recall ever having an item on the agenda that was basically stating a certain uh, scenario, in this case, H.E. Holmes, and then having a recommendation coming from the committee that varied. It varies. So it's not a question of, of, of consistency. I don't know if we've ever had a circumstance like that. I yield back. Okay, well, I, I just want to interject. I really appreciate you and um, um, Commissioner, well, Vice Chairman Robinson, first of all, happy birthday. And then uh, I appreciate Vice Chairman Robinson and also, uh, should I say, Chairman Robinson of the Transportation Committee and Vice Chairman uh, uh, Mike Mulk here for your diligence and your, uh, your hard work on this uh, project. I know it's been long and it's been one that's uh, met quite a bit of opposition and in some it has met uh, a, a, a lot it favorite, favorable to some. It's been very favorable. So I just want to make sure that uh, you all continue to work well like you have in the past. And I can just kind of feel a little friction today. But um, I'm certainly sure that you all worked in this committee together. I don't have a problem with tomorrow just uh, layering that uh, uh, amendment mm -hmm. within this vote right. just right. to, to uh, if it's comfort level for uh, you, Commissioner, uh, both Robinson and also for uh, mole care, and also for the comfort of the citizens that it, it is going to be that route B versus it change a little later to uh, homes, AG homes. I believe that's what you're trying to do, just solidify and uh, make sure that the citizens are very comfortable with just knowing that it will not be, um, we will not be going with the AG homes route. So I believe I saw uh, Commissioner Guider's hand. Commissioner Guider, yeah. could you please? 30 read? minutes ago. <laughs> there you go. I'm so sorry. That's okay. But I had the floor for a second. I had to. I would like to uh, uh, remind Chairman, I mean Vice Chairman uh, Kelly Robinson, that committees are recommending committees. They do not have the power without the Board of Commissioners, and that's what has been broken here. Uh, we just paid fifty thousand dollars to the collaborative firm. They went all around the county in every district 
and then they came back and said, you got to take H.E. Holmes off the table. Nobody wants it in any district. Um, so that was done, but I don't see how the decision was made just to put all those miles that went from here to H.E. Holmes into one district other than some kind of alternative motive to assure a vote. I was never asked, never even called and asked. We got to change the routes because of the collaborative firm's uh, results. What if you were uh, voting would you want in your district? Never got that, but one commissioner got got it, and that was a swing vote on this commission. Let's let's don't let's put the uh, elephant out there. So um, this has uh, all been very scheming. It has been very uh, manipulative, and I would just want a show of hands of anybody on this board that had a meeting with their citizens since the last work session where the new routes was um, changed. Uh, show of hands, Mulcair, okay, you, well, you had a, a district what? meeting. What I'm trying to get at is nobody took it back to the voters. Nobody, nobody took it back to their constituents. So how do you know what your citizens want at this point? The whole thing has been, been very confusing. And while one district gets all those miles, it, there had to be a reason, and that was a swing vote. And I yield back. Okay, Commissioner Guider, as I said so eloquently um, several times, these votes, I mean, these routes will go before a public hearing, so um, all of them, if it's four or five or 25, they will go before a public hearing and the public will have an opportunity to weigh in. I have requested specially, especially since this Route uh, B has been added on to, uh, as, as one of the routes uh, coming forth instead of A.G. Holmes collaborative firm to go uh, out. And again, we need to speak with our citizens once again. So it's not a moot point. And we can do that again. And, and that's certainly on the table for, dis, uh, for discussion right now. So it's not a lost cause. Uh, and uh, I am looking forward to uh, collaborative firm taking it a step further and going back out to the citizens speaking on that particular route, which is B. But that was not collaborative's uh, main role in this. It was to talk about all our transportation services and amenities here in Douglas County. So it wasn't specifically to routes uh, or to this, uh, tra I call it a van system. So it was related to every, all these systems that we have in Douglas County. So I don't want to put everything in the ownership. I believe that Douglas, uh, the collaborative firm did more than what they were um, paid to do in this particular uh, scenario. And I appreciate all the hard work that they did uh, communicating to our citizens. And I know they have no problem going back. Uh, any other questions from the Board of Commissioners? Point of vote, Madam Chair. Yes. Commissioner Mitchell. Yes. I want to join in on the fun. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll just add, though, um, Monday will be my birthday, so I guess I'm entitled, I guess, for the birthday call. But <laughs> on a serious note, this is, this is why I said earlier about this whole process has been quite interesting. Um, and the process and the transparency that I, I think we need to look at doing a better job at, not to say that something was done wrong, but there's a lot of things that wasn't done right, meaning fairness to the citizens who want this and those who don't want this. Now, I'll, I'll address at least a portion of Ms. Guider's Commissioner Guider's uh, comments, I don't know if it's directed to me, but I'll just kind of take ownership of it, to say, did District 1 do meetings? Absolutely. We did several meetings, absolutely. And for those who came to any of my meetings, understood the mere fact of whether you were for it or against it, we still had the conversations. Now, I, I wasn't trying to sell you on it or to get you off of the bandwagon, but yes, there have been several meetings in District 1 
And if there is any, I guess if you're calling the swing vote or the other vote or whatever that vote may you think it is, I think we've been open and honest as to the process, as I've been open and honest as to the backroom deals that I totally disagree with, totally. That's what got all of this started. I think if we had been open, honest with the process, letting people know not, because as I said, out of the meetings I've had, I've never tried to sell you on it or discourage you against it. I just only told you the truth and the facts of the matter as to what this would entail. I'll say my collaborative group did an excellent job as to branding and educating those about the services that we offer. It wasn't about the bus. It was about the branding. And I think we get confused and we try to muddy the water and put them all together, but there's a separate thing that's going on. So I'm not going to prolong this because I know tomorrow is going to be, if you think this is long, tomorrow I, I welcome you guys. Uh, we, we might be here to 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon, so I'm not going <laughs> to prolong this outside of we've got to do better at being open and honest from the committee level as to what is being recommended and then letting those in the public understand and see what that process and or statements are so everybody will be clear. Now, you're not going to get 100% of everybody saying I'm in or out, but at least what they can say is it was done honestly. It was done fairly. And as I stated several months ago as to why I was not supportive at that time of what was not being transparent, I still stand on that. And I'm glad to where we're moving forward to, but I've always stated I've supported a mobile transportation system in Douglas County from 2015 moving forward. I just didn't agree with the backroom deals that I didn't know anything about and I found out via flyer. Not good. So we'll talk more about this tomorrow, guys. I just, I, 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 I just feel bad about having to sit through this and then sit through it again tomorrow. Because <laughs> tomorrow it will be a, I don't, I don't know how this time uh, <clears throat> span will go, but it's going to be very interesting though. But again, Monday, August 12th, I look for all gifts to be kind of, you know, as my birthday will be celebrated. So just FYI, thank you. I yield back. <laughs> thank you. How, how you going to do that? Take how how you going to say he gets really? his early birthday in? All right. Well, uh, any other questions regarding this matter from the Board of Commissioners no, before I call hey, for uh, executive session? Attorney Bernard. Yes, oh, there you are. I didn't see you. Uh, I'm sorry. Do, we, do we need to go into executive session? We do for uh, litigation legal matters. Yes. Okay, Board of Commissioners at this time, um, do we have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All when, in favor? When, well, could I suggest that we just move the meeting upstairs so we don't have to come back downstairs? We don't, we don't plan on it being long, so we'll do it in place if that's all right with y'all. Yes. We okay. can do it down here. Yes, no problem. thank you. Long. We have a motion and second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, the same. And the motion carries. And uh, take a five minute break, and I'll see you all right back up here in the stands. Thank you, citizens, and you uh, may return after our executive session. It should not take long. Thank you. We're on? Okay. Okay, Board of Commissioners, do you have any more comments or questions for the, today's work session? Um, just want to. Uh, Okay, we have some people coming back into our meeting joining us, so I'll just wait for just a second. Yeah. So we good? I'm trying to find the number. Um, for resmed. What number was that? Clerk, do you know it what? Was, uh, number 10. Number 10. Oh, there it is. Um, Board of Commissioners, I would like to consider placing uh, tab number 10 back on the agenda for tomorrow for further discussion. 
And again, that item just to rehash is authorization to approve a, um, a claim for a property tax refund for ResMed as, um, as recommended by the Board of Assessors and Tax Commissioner and I authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. We would uh, like to discuss that tomorrow, so I'll have that added back onto the agenda under new business. Any questions or concerns from the Board of Commissioners? Okay, th thank you, and that's um, as stated. Um, all right, well, if there are no further comments, uh, this board uh, work session is adjourned. You have one question, Commissioner well, Guider. Uh, on, Commissioner Guider has one comment. On item 17, is it going to be moved to new business? Or yes, old we'll, business, yeah, old business? Yeah, it will. And we'll just uh, work with the, the clerk and we'll just uh, get, uh, work on this uh, agenda for tomorrow. All right, thank you. Okay, with no, if there are no other uh, comments, this meeting is adjourned.